Welcome to the lab portion of the Configuring SSH on Cisco Devices lesson. This is a look at the topology we're going to be using. This is just the standard triangle of routers and I don't think we're going to be doing a whole lot on R2 and R3. Probably won't use R3 at all. Just wanted to let you peep the topology before we got started here. Okay and here we are on the CLI. This is R1. I haven't given it a um, host name yet. You can tell it's got the default router as a host name. R2 and R3. From R1, I just want to make sure that I can ping both R2 and R3 before we get started here. And I can. And so we don't have uh, SSH running on this router. And I don't think I went through the uh, verification commands during the theory lesson, but there's two of them really. There's show SSH, and we can see here that we don't have any connections running. This is going to specifically show your connections. And then show IP SSH is going to be the one that you're going to use mostly. And when you do this and you don't have SSH running, it will tell you, please create RSA keys of at least 768 bit size to enable SSH v2. I'm assuming that uh, 512 is sufficient for v1. But if you see this, this means that SSH is not running. And so let's get to it. So let's go into configuration mode. And from global configuration, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a host name, name it R1. And the next step, this is a little different than what you might be used to, you're going to go ahead and assign a domain name. And the command to do that is IP domain hyphen name, and then you're going to specify your domain name. We're going to use packetlab.com. Packetlab.com. And the combination of the host name and the domain name is going to be what your keys are named after. And speaking of keys, that's going to be our next step. And this command's probably a little bit exotic if you haven't dealt with it before. It's crypto. It's a global configuration command. Crypto key generate. And so the options, all that you got really for an option here is RSA. Invoke the help here. You do have a number of options for configuring SSH. Really, you just want to go with two options here. One of them is to specify a modulus. And the modulus basically determines the strength of the key. The higher the modulus number, the stronger the key is. One downside with that is that the higher the modulus number, the more CPU cycles you're going to have to use to encrypt and decrypt stuff. 1024 seems to be an agreed upon, well, I wouldn't say standard, but best use. What you could do here is you can hit enter. If you hit enter, it'll it'll generate the RSA key, but it will prompt you for the um, modulus, or you can go ahead and specify the modulus, and you can see you can go from 360 to 2048. Uh, I use 1024, and basically that's just saving you a step. Um, but let's just hit enter in this case. And you can see here, the name of the keys will be, and like I told you before, it's going to be a combination of the host name and the domain name. That's why you have to specify both. It's going to be r1.packetlab.com. So that's why those are necessary. And you can see down here, it's asking you to choose a modulus size. And it kind of gives you a little description here. So this is kind of nice. It tells you the range. And it tells you that choosing the key modulus greater than 512 may take a few minutes. And as always with Cisco iOS, whatever um, value is within the brackets is going to be the default. Or basically, what's if you just hit Enter here, it would use this value of 512. We're going to specify 1024. It does tell you that it'll take a few minutes. It's depends on your platform and uh, maybe your iOS version, but it doesn't take that long. I've seen these where they have taken quite a long time to generate on older devices, but if we had enter here, it goes through, see that wasn't long at all. And the key part here is we've generated our 1024-bit our, uh, RSA key, but the console message that we get here tells us that SSH has been enabled. And that's SSH 1.99. And as we know from the theory portion, that means that both SSH1 and SSH2 are supported. This is Cisco's crazy ass SSH versioning, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But the big takeaway from this is that technically, when you execute this command, when you create the RSA keys, you have enabled SSH. Of course, SSH is not going to work at this point, and we can prove that by going over to R2. Okay, for the sake of clipping a few seconds, or minutes actually in this case, off of this lesson, I'm not going to walk through this live. What I did was R3 is not running SSH at all. I haven't configured it, so I haven't issued that crypto key generate RSA. So when I go to SSH to that device, it says it's refused by the remote host because SSH is not running. Whereas if I SSH to R1 and the hyphen L is just specifying a user ID, a username. I'm able to connect and it's passing the username and now it's asking for a password. Well, the reason I'm not able to log in, my authentication fails after three attempts, is that we haven't set up a username password. So technically, this command is all you need to enable SSH and specifically the SSH server. Did I just say SSH? SSH server on your device. But 
I mean, it doesn't get you anywhere because you're not gonna be able to connect to it. And while we're here, let's go ahead and do show run section line VTY. I wanna take a look at the VTY line. And you can see here, I have a VTY line password of not packet lab set up. So if I go to R2 and I tell net 10.1.12.1, I can specify this, oops, not packet. Lab. I can log in via Telnet using that password. What we're going to see when we um, complete our configuration of SSH is you're not going to be able to use this with SSH. SSH requires a username and a password in order to connect. So that's one of the kind of gotchas. If you're using the VTY line password uh, with Telnet, you're going to need to uh, do a little bit more work and at least create a local username database for the um, users that will be accessing your device via SSH. So let's go ahead and do that bit right now. So I've just configured a username, Packet Lab, with privilege level 15 and the password being Packet Lab. Now I've got one more step, well, possibly two. In order for the login to use this username password, I have to go under the VTY lines. And if you've, if you've done this with Telnet, this is the same thing. You're just going to specify login local. And local is your option here. Uh, if you're running AAA, there's a different command to enable AAA, but we're just going to use the local username database today. So we're going to specify to use login local. So what we've done so far is we've created the host name, created the IP domain name, generated the RSA keys. We've created a local username and password. So we have an account to log in with. And we've gone under the VTY line and we've specified that we want to use the local username database for authentication. So we're good to go here if we go to R2 now to Telnet we saw that it was just Telnet to the IP address so logically it would follow that SSH would just be SSH with the IP address and here's going to be an error that might throw you off at first it says no user specified nor available for the SSH client what SSH does is by default it's going to pass your username credentials so if I do a show users here I'm logged into the console line but I'm not logged in with a username so what it's trying to do is it's trying to take this username, which is null, and then pass it on via SSH. So that's why you're saying there's, it says you haven't specified a username. You could specify one to override that if you want to log in with a different name rather than one you're logged into on this device, uh, nor available. And that's what it's saying. It's like, you, we don't have a username to pass to it. So SSH question mark, and you get a few choices here. The one we're looking at is use this login name. We're going to use the packet lab. I'll have to remember to capitalize that as the username we're going to use here because it's the one we just created on R1. And there is a specific order to this. If you were to do SSH, put the IP address and then the question mark, you could see that you don't have those options. So it's a little bit weird there. A lot of uh, commands, there's not a specific order, but in this case there is. You're going to want to specify the username before you specify the IP address or the uh, fully qualified domain name. So now I'm saying let's SSH to R1 using Packet Lab as our login ID. And if everything goes right, Packet Lab spelled with uppercase letters should allow us to get in and we are in. So we have successfully created an SSH connection from R2 to R1. We're on R2 right now and we're logged into R1. So some of our verification commands are show SSH and we could see that we've got an in and out session uh, right here. No SSH v1 server connections are running. We'll touch on that in just a bit here as well as the version. I think I've already told you this, and especially if you watch the theory, you know that this means that SSH1 and SSH2 are both available. And then the other verification command is show IP SSH. I don't think there's any arguments with this. No, nope. and it'll tell you that SSH is enabled, which, yeah, that makes sense because we're on here. Um, the version that it's running, the authentication timeout, we'll take a look at that in a bit, and then the authentication retry. So you get a little bit of information here. This is probably more beneficial when you're actually on R1 to um, see how your setup is going here.